Hey, this is Moutmer from Road Precision. In this video, we are wrapping up our series on Niagara 415 and the new features that were added. And we're going to be looking at the passphrase changes and what they mean for your everyday usage in Niagara and um, what you'll need to keep in mind as you're pulling off stations, maybe from Jace's and things where you don't actually have the passphrase. So we're going to start off with a little... Um, cryptography uh, definitions of a few things and uh, how passwords are saved in Niagara depending on the usage and then we'll explain the changes that were made in 415 and show you a little bit what that looks like in our uh, passphrase dialog box for our station bog files. So let's jump in and get started. All right, so the first thing we need to understand is this idea of hashing passwords and encrypting passwords. So um, actually, generally, not even specifically about uh, passwords, what hashing and encrypting are. So hashing is the idea of saving something like a password. This is typically used in a password scenario. Saving it where it's only uh, savable one way and you can't recover the password from that save that you've made through the algorithm. So this way this works is you put in a password, say you're on Amazon, you put in your password in Amazon, Amazon doesn't actually have your password stored in clear text on their servers. Huge security vulnerability, they would never want to do that. Um, too many customers, too many passwords they could potentially have. Uh, their workers could even see your passwords. It would be a bad, bad thing. So what was devised was this idea of hashing, where you put in your password, and when it's saved initially to Amazon servers, they would run it through this algorithm where it will spit out a string of text, essentially, that uh, the password can't be pulled back out of. And that's the way our user, our user passwords are stored in Niagara. When you first set up that user, it goes through the hashing algorithm and it saves the password. Every time the user goes to log in, uh, the hashing algorithm is run against the password that was put in and then compared with what's saved in our station. So that's what's used in our uh, user passwords because we don't need to recover the password or specifically use the password in the station itself. Encrypting is different in that we can recover the password. So we save it securely. Uh, we need a passphrase or a key or something like that in order to get the, the password or the secured uh, information out. Um, but we can get it out. The way this is used in uh, 414 and actually 415 as well is that uh, the passwords where we need to use them for another service. So like our email or our Niagara network where we're logging into another service, we're logging into our Gmail server, uh, we need to give the Gmail server the actual password. So that's what the encrypting is used for here. In um, 415, we're actually going to be combining those two uh, algorithms for security. So our user passwords are now hashed, like they have been, and they're also encrypted, which means if we don't have the passphrase, we can't use those users anymore. The passwords are no longer recoverable. Uh, they're no longer even referenceable by that hashing algorithm because they've been encrypted on top of the hashing. So, as I mentioned, we just briefly go over this again, the way the passphrase behavior has worked in 414. If you want to modify a user in an offline station, you can modify users. You can do that. Um, you don't need to enter the passphrase to save or do anything like that. Uh, you can modify them. Uh, and the same thing for uh, resetting. Because there uh, no encryption on the users, when you go to reset a station uh, passphrase, it only removes the reversible passwords that have been uh, encrypted using that passphrase. So the email passwords, the Niagara Network passwords, so on and so on. And, but our user passwords won't be affected. In 4.15, this changes. So a station bog file passphrase is now required in order for you to modify users. And in order to um, uh, facilitate this, when you reset your passphrase, your passwords for your reversible clients, so your email, your Niagara network, and your hashed user passwords both get reset, removed. Uh, do not pass go. They're gone. 
So now let's jump into Niagara and uh, just look at what that passphrase dialog box looks like now and uh, see how it actually removes the users. All right, so we're in Niagara now and I have opened up a bog file. As you're probably well aware, we're going into our file system and then our stations and then opening up a station and opening up the uh, bog file in that station. And then we're going to come into our user service. And in this case, I've actually already added in this user, which is actually an admin user. Could have been more creative with the name. So be it. Um, so I put in that admin user and I go to do a save as I normally would. And I can't because I don't have an encoding key or a passphrase as we call it. Um, so I hit OK now and I go to our unlock button here at the top where we're normally working on the uh, everything passphrase related. And it mostly looks the same. I can enter in my passphrase if I want, if I know what it is to unlock the file and make the changes as I need. Um, and I can force that passphrase to be something else if I don't know it, but it's um, reminding you that all of the password values are gonna be removed if you do that. Um, and, uh, then we can just force the password uh, values to be removed out if we wanted to do it that way without changing the passphrase. Another option that was added in here is remove all users except one super user. And then we're also adding in a new passphrase. This is a sort of a nice little feature. You could do this in a couple more steps, I think, with what we had previously in, the pa in this passphrase dialog box. But this is nice in that it simplifies things down to a single way to do it. Um, this would let us do something like this. I want to keep my uh, user, but I don't have the passphrase to be able to undo this admin user. So we're going to clear it out. Um, so I want to keep the admin user and I want to add in a new passphrase and we'll do something like this. And then we'll hit update. And what you'll see happen is that admin user is now gone and uh, we have a passphrase now um, using that uh, one that I entered. And so now I can save the file and move on with my day and uh, things behave in the way that you expect them to uh, going forward. And that is uh, gonna wrap it up for all of our deeper dives into the new features in Niagara 415 and uh, the deep dive specifically into the passphrase changes in Niagara 415. Uh, we went a little bit in the weeds there about uh, hashing and encrypting, but hopefully it was helpful and informative for you. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. If there's new features that I didn't cover in 415 that you've seen um, on the uh, new features list or the change log or anything like that, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and um, I'm more than happy to dive into something else if there's something that uh, looks particularly interesting to you. Uh, thanks as always for watching. If you're in the market for Honeywell, Johnson Controls, uh, Vicon, anything Niagara related, uh, and you're trying to purchase some product or something like that, feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help. And um, thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you next video. Thanks.